and this is Dizzy Quilts and Sews. I have a quilting video for you today uh, in which I'm going to share how I thread based my quilts. So I've been asked multiple times how I based my quilts because I used to get on my hands and knees on the hardwood floor and spend a long time with pins that would hurt my fingers um, just putting together basically my quilt sandwiches and then a few years ago I discovered a method for basting your quilts using thread needle and thread and some long boards all right looks like we have a visitor bear So in this video, I thought I would share my method for board basting a quilt. Now, this may not be the right way. It may not be the way everybody does it, but it's the way I've been doing it. And it's worked really, really well for me. So I just thought I would uh, put a video together for you today. All right, so here's what we need to get this little baby quilt basted. So first I need my quilt top. I have my quilt back. I have my batting that's cut slightly smaller than my backing, which is cut slightly bigger than my top. I have painter's tape or maxing, uh, masking tape. And I have two wooden boards. So this is everything I'm gonna need to get this um, the, the top, the back rolled onto the boards and to get started with my basting. And then in addition to all of these pieces, I'm going to need a needle and thread. Um, I use usually like older thread, very inexpensive thread. I mean, once you you start quilting the quilt and you remove all of the basting stitches, that thread's going in the garbage or recycling bin or in a stuffing of some kind. So quality in this case really does not matter. All right, so let's get this positioned. All right, so I've got my boards here. I've got my backing. So we're going to start with the back. And you'll notice that my back is pieced. It's got two different fabrics on there. So I'm going to position the backing right side down on my table like this and then grab my first board now you don't have to be crazy precise here but try to make this as straight as possible so that when you start rolling the fabric onto your board things don't get all wonky and hard to keep straight. So I'm kind of using the board to make sure that this is pretty much even. I'm using some of the lines on my table to help me keep things straight. So once I'm pretty happy that my backing is positioned properly, I'm gonna take my painter's tape and basically just stick it down so it stays on the board while I roll it onto it. Also, you want to keep your fabric taut, I think that's the word, but not stretched. Do not stretch your fabric. You end up with some really, really wonky uh, quilt backs or even quilt tops. So no stretching, just taut. And then you just roll it onto the board. Now you might notice, I don't know, you don't even see it, but my, the fabric I used for to piece the back, both pieces are not exactly even. That doesn't really matter. Once I'm done with the quilting and I've squared it all up, all of that is gonna disappear. So 
So there you go. So I've got my back onto my board. Next, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with my top. This time though, I'm gonna put the top right side up on my table. So I've got my top, my top like this. Um, another good idea or something that's, that would, that's really good to do before you get going on this process is to make sure that both your backing and your top are pressed. Um, I mean, this is not pressed perfectly, but there aren't any crazy wrinkles on here. And exact same thing as I did with the back, I'm gonna try and line myself up with some of my seams. I'm trying to make this as straight as I can. And once I'm happy with the alignment of everything, I'm gonna use my painter stake and tape this down in a couple places. Right. And so again, trying to keep the fabric taut, but without stretching anything, I'm simply going to roll my quilt top onto my board, trying to keep things as straight as I can. Here we go. Now, you might have noticed that my boards are quite a bit longer than my quilt, and this is because I use the same boards, whether I'm basting an 86-inch bed quilt or a 36-inch baby quilt, these boards and this method works exactly the same. So whether you're doing this on a big quilt, small quilt, whatever, the only thing I don't use this with are little table toppers or wall hangings. Obviously, if the square, if the quilt is this big, I'm not going to bother with the boards. I just use pins. But anything baby size and above, this is the method that I've been using for years now. And again, this may not be the way of doing it. This may not be the perfect way of doing it, but it's a way of doing it that works for me. So I thought I would share it with you guys. All right, next we want to start unrolling these things uh, and putting the batting in between both pieces of fabric to actually create a quilt sandwich. So that's what we're going to look at next. All right, so the first thing you want to do is start unrolling the backing. Again, making sure that this is as flat as possible, but you're not taping this down to your table. It's loose, but it's as flat as possible. So this is my backing that I've started unrolling onto my table. And next, I'm gonna take the piece of batting that I cut to size, and I'm going to start laying it on top of the back Now, it doesn't matter what you do with your batting over here, as long as down here, you're covering or almost covering the entire quilt back. And again, nice and flat, but not stretched. So now I've got my backing, I've got my batting, and I'm going to take the roll that's got the top on it and place it down on top of the batting. Again, I want to keep this centered basically on my batting 
or my backing piece. And I wanna try and keep it as straight as possible. Now I know that my back is not a lot bigger than my top. So I'm not gonna go crazy here and leave like three inches at the bottom. I have about an inch and a half here. So make it as flat as you can and start unrolling it on top of the batting. Remove any threads. And there you go. Now I'm ready to start basting. All right, so I've got my needle and thread. Um, this was leftover thread from my last basting session, so it's not super long. Again, no need to get really fancy here. The point is that your sandwich or your quilt sandwich stays together while you're quilting it. So no need for any dots, uh, knots, no need for, you know, backstitching or anything crazy like that. You just want the three layers to stay together. All right, now I hope you're gonna be able to see what I'm doing, but basically I'm starting in the bottom right corner, probably because I'm right-handed. And what I'm gonna do is start attaching the three layers together. So the space in between each stitch is basically my hand. So again, not super scientific, but put the needle in and out, and you'll see that you end up creating like a zigzag. So I put it in here, out, then in a hand's width, apart, out, again, up, in, out, and so on. In this case, I've got a little room up above here, so I might unroll one more turn. And then lay the top, and that way I have room for another stitch. So in, and then out. Again, once I'm at the top, put my hand down quickly, just decide, okay, about a hand's width away. In, out, and then go down. And just keep going like this across the whole piece of your quilt top that you can easily access. So you're gonna baste this entire section before unrolling any more fabric. All right, and just keep going all the way across. All right, so I'm done basting this section that I had unrolled. So now I'm just gonna pull the whole thing down so that the sections that I've now basted is kind of hanging down here. Again, um, this is the space I have, this is the table I have. Um, so, and it, this is a baby quilt, so I'm letting it hang over the side, but you probably don't want to be doing that with a huge bed quilt because that will stretch both your top and your quilt back. And you, meant, you might end up having some problems when you're quilting your quilt. So, you know, this is a very small quilt that doesn't weigh a ton, but anything much bigger than this, you could end up with stretched out backings or quilt tops, which would not be good. Now you might, the eagle-eyed among you might have noticed that my batting is incredibly crooked. Um, I cut it with scissors, which is something I don't usually do, and it's looking a little ragged, but all good. I have plenty of room to now unroll another section to baste. Again, I'm flattening out, smoothing out any little wrinkles and making sure that my fabric is taut, but
but not stretched. And once I'm happy that I've got no little stray threads, that everything is nice and flat, I'm just gonna go back to my needle and thread, start over here and base this entire section. When the section is done, I'm gonna unroll the rest of this quilt and do the exact same thing. And then I can start with the quilting. All right, well, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions at all, or if you feel I've missed anything, please leave your question or your comments in the comment space below. I would love to, to hear from you. Thank you for stopping by. Please give me a thumbs up on your way out if you like the video. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel. That would be really appreciated. Thanks again, and I will see you soon.